Yeah, no, I was watching a lot of documentaries about this, and you know, you see the guys that are basically ending up back in El Salvador, and right. they're like, "Hey, man, uh, my friend got deported six months ago, and he was killed right, right. away." So they kind of don't know what to do. They may not want to join back into MS-13, but they're scared for their lives against the police. Absolutely. So they end up joining the gang just to survive. Right. So it's it's kind of a catch-22 situation. It is. So along with, you know, the Civil War had just ended in El Salvador, there was all these weapons all around the country, and it wasn't really controlled at the time. So you had all these guns, all this heavy ammunition, and, you know, essentially MS-13 became arms traffickers during this time. Is that accurate? I w- I never heard something of, of uh, to that extent. Did they have access to some guns? Um, absolutely. But I think also we have to understand where these guns came from. They didn't come from El Salvador. They came from America. They came from America. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to get into that. It's really kind right. of ironic how, you know, America has this problem with MS-13, but they kind of created MS-13 right. indirectly. Right. So yeah. a lot of it is like, there's now there's just havoc in El Salvador. Now who is it that we're gonna go ahead and, and, and blame this uh, stuff at? Does MS-13 have a fault to a certain extent of starting the gang right there? Absolutely, absolutely. But then also, what was the opportunity for a kid to even not wanting to go ahead and get a gun and defend themselves when he saw that there was no type of youth activities or, or and there was people in sweat labors or sweatshops getting paid very low wages to, to be trying to able to um, go ahead and survive. Now, violence is, is one, of the, one of the main attributes of MS-13, but, but not only violence, but violence involving minors. Mm-hmm. seems to be a major right. a major theme with the victims being minors as well as the suspects uh, for the actual killings being minors as right. well. Why is there such a focus on children? Well, it's the gang culture, I think. When I was 15 or 16 years old, the people that we were assaulting or attacking, it was kids killing kids. And when you start thinking about MS-13, sometimes you do have this picture of what's been portrayed to you as the the mean looking gang member with the face tattoos and you will think that this person is 20, 30 something years old killing these kids. But in reality, it's youth from a certain gang fighting against kids from MS-13 too, which a lot of times we forget that these kids from, these people from MS-13, they're also kids as, as, um, as well. And a whole, uh, and they're, they have done some horrific um, crimes as well. And the victims that they, that you do see like the stuff that you're, probably talking about recently from the East Coast. It's kids that are having um, situations with other kids at some schools that are, they're the same age and the way that these kids um, are letting out their, their aggression or the way that they saw from the aftermath in the wars in El Salvador is through that extent of, um, of violence. Well, MS-13 starts to spread to other uh, South American and Central American mm-hmm. countries. Right. Uh, and, and the violence was really just off the meter. There was a situation in Honduras where I guess the Honduran government wanted to restore the death penalty. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a situation in 2004 where a whole bus was sprayed up. Right. Um, 28 people dead, 14 uh, wounded. Most of the passengers were women and children. Right. Uh, six, Six different people just sprayed the bus with guns, and then another person actually went on board on the bus and just started executing people. Uh, you know, a guy named uh, Juan Batista Jimenez, he was accused of masterminding the uh, the massacre, and then when he got to prison, he was actually killed by other MS-13 members. Mm. Uh, you know, buses would get burned up in broad daylight for going to the wrong neighborhoods. Uh, police would be targeted, government officials would be targeted. Um, you know, it got to the point where the Supreme Court in El Salvador actually classified uh, them as a terrorist organization. And uh, there, were, there were really situations where there was presidents in El Salvador that would have to negotiate with MS-13 to try to lower the killings and so forth. Absolutely. So it really, 
as big as MS-13 was in the U.S., in El Salvador, it became a major, major entity. Right. And you're familiar with, with, with all this type of thing. Correct. But why do you think that it became so huge in, in El Salvador, considering that it started in, in L.A.? Well, a lot of it consists of the deportations that we had, or the Im immigrant people being deported. If they had any ties to, um, if they committed any type of crime, like in 1995 or, or 1996, you will go ahead and get deported, even if it was some type of misdemeanor. And when you continue to just have oppression to try to go ahead and fix a problem, a gang is notorious of MS-13, but you're thing is your strategy is just to go ahead and try to kill them or try to go ahead and push them out of that out, out away to from that town to a, they're just going to go to go ahead and uh, a nearby town but nobody go went ahead and focused on the rehabilitation of the gang member nobody went to continue and focus on what's causing ms-13 to continue to spread was there lack any the lack of opportunity of resources of jobs of even mental health um, social services in el salvador there was really none of that stuff so in order for us to be able to stop the ms-13 from continuing to form we have to go ahead and give opportunity for other kids that want to go ahead and to get into other gangs and give them opportunities for them to think about not joining that gang and say, you know what, here's this job, here's this, uh, facil this youth facility, or he here's this mental health services, or here's this, um, this curriculum or this program that's going to help you through the healing that you grew up seeing throughout your life, or how do you go ahead and... Um, parent or how do you go ahead and be a good parent or a, a good citizen of society if if you will so we have to go ahead and start focusing on the rehabilitation and again in El Salvador there was in, there was none of that so it's going to continue to form whether it's it's MS-13 where it's um, other gangs it's just going to continue to uprise as as um, as well without those resources